Plutonium is an element which is heavier than uranium. And it's created inside every nuclear reactor automatically. Now, plutonium turns out to be a very good nuclear explosive. This picture is a glass ball. It's not plutonium. But it is made to be the exact size of the plutonium ball that was inside the Nagasaki bomb. That's how much plutonium you need to destroy a city. And, by the way, this is how you really handle plutonium. You have to handle it in what's called a glove box. The reason it can be handled safely this way is because it only gives off alpha radiation. But the danger means, this, this means that any criminal could carry this across the border and you wouldn't even know that they were carrying it. Uh, every nuclear weapon involves uh, either plutonium or what's called highly enriched uranium. You notice that big bomb there? It has a little black ball at the top, the tiny one. That's the plutonium. When they talk about dismantling nuclear weapons, what they do is they take the plutonium ball out of it, and that makes it useless. Now here's the last point of tonight. That if the nuclear power industry expands greatly, they're going to run out of uranium. In fact, it's ironic that they're looking in Finland for uranium, because the, the grade is not very good in here. I mean, not to be insulting, but it shows that they're already beginning to scrape the bottom of the barrel. And this has been known for a very long time, going back to, this was known in 1945, they knew this was going to happen. From the very beginning, they have planned to use uranium only for a while, but then to switch to plutonium as a fuel. And that means that you have to take that irradiated fuel, and you have to get the plutonium out of it, and then recycle that, in new fuel for new nuclear reactors. Nuclear enthusiasts, of which I was once one, by the way, uh, I wanted to be a nuclear scientist at one time. It's very interesting. But for people who like nuclear power, they say, wow, this is great. We can, we can recycle the plutonium and keep the business going for a long time. But the problem is this. Right now, there is a firewall between the reactor and the bomb. And that wall of fire is radiation. Nobody can get the plutonium now because it's too radioactive. But the nuclear industry plans to eliminate that firewall and replace it with a reprocessing plant. And that plant is where they separate the plutonium so that they can recycle it into reactors. The problem is you can just as easily recycle it into bombs. And it doesn't mean that the utility has to do it. Any crook that gets his hands on the stuff once it's separated and to me, this is the final straw. I mean, to me, I, I, can't, I can't endorse a, a view of the future where weapons-usable materials are in common circulation. But unfortunately, you cannot have a nuclear renaissance without this happening. And in my view, even if nuclear power could solve the climate change problem, which I don't believe it can at all, this is posing a problem which threatens the world every bit as much as climate change, if not more. Because the spread of nuclear weapons, of course, could annihilate the planet in very short order. And when you do reprocess the waste, the way you reprocess the waste to get the plutonium, you have to dissolve it all in acid and give liquid waste. These giant tanks are being built to hold the liquid waste left over from reprocessing. These are actually military waste from the bomb program in the United States. But the same kind of liquid waste are produced whenever you reprocess a radiated fuel. And the very final picture is this one. Bob likes this picture. He calls it the Maids of Muslimovo. When the Soviet Union collapsed, Bob was one of the first group of uh, Westerners to go into the previously forbidden nuclear weapons zones of the ex-Soviet Union. These young women are just now learning for the first time what has caused so much sickness in their community <coughs> over the last 40 years. That Joseph Stalin wanted to have an atomic bomb built for his birthday. And so in order to speed up the process, they dumped high-level liquid waste into the River Tetchen. And many people got very sick for many years and died of a mysterious illness. And the Soviet doctors were forbidden to ever use the word radiation or radioactivity. They said that this disease was something they called vegetative syndrome. Now, uh, obviously, nobody wants to do this uh, here in the West or anywhere else. But the problem is, these tanks of liquid waste are, if they were to explode, as they have in Russia, or if they were to leak, as they have in Hanford, Washington, 
or if they were to be targeted by enemies, could cause tremendous damage to the environment. So this is what really where I draw the line on nuclear power. I say I don't think these are reasonable risks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gordon. Exactly, it's the MOX fuel. Okay. She's asking, what is this stuff called MOX fuel? MOX, M-O-X. That's a name that the industry uses for the plutonium recycled. The industry has learned not to use the word plutonium because people don't like it. Which again, to my mind, is dishonest. But to their mind, it's just good marketing. So what they say is that, you know, we, we can recycle the waste. We can recycle the waste. They don't say plutonium. This is not really waste. There's more energy there, and we can get that energy out, but they don't call it plutonium. Why are they afraid to call it what it is? And when they make the plutonium into fresh fuel for the reactor, they don't call it plutonium fuel, they call it MOX fuel. M-O-X stands for mixed oxide fuel. And the mixed oxide means that they put the plutonium and mix it with uranium. So they have uranium and plutonium mixed. But Military specialists have pointed out that if somebody steals this MOX fuel, they can separate the plutonium in their bathtub and well, get plutonium for, that could be used for a bomb. Because this is what they plan for Okiwoto, the one that they are building now, so that it should be possible to use the MOX fuel there. So this is already happening yes. in Finland. Uh, this is what I was concerned about. Because you may not realize it, but this will have a big impact on Finnish society. If they start using MOX fuel regularly, you will have to have very strict military control. It's going to mean that there must be very high security associated with anybody who is handling these materials or who knows about the shipments of the materials, anybody who lives along the route of where the material is being shipped. All these people will have to be investigated as potential security risks. So it has far-reaching consequences for society. Well, this is also a comment on this recycling of the fuel. As I'm sure you know, Finland was the first country in the world to, to make a political decision about the final deposit of the red waste. And in Finland we are very proud of it. Uh, but the head chief manager, uh, the chief manager of the Finnish Radiation Authority, <coughs> Jukka Laaksonen, in a very astonishing interview uh, given, uh, I think it was two, year, two or three years, two years ago perhaps, in the Finnish local newspaper in Lovisa, made by its chief editor, Arto Hendrickson. And this was a very interesting, very big interview with this uh, head of the Radiation Authority. And he admitted that the decision about the, uh, 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 about the red waste final deposit was made on political grounds. Yes. And he said that it, that is actually stupid, because we need that fuel. Yes. Well, actually, he said it in a more diplomatic <laughs> and indirect way, but the message was very clear. Yeah. And, and, and this is the only, the first and up to now, the only uh, situation where a Finnish authority in, uh, on this field has admitted yeah. why they made this final deposit decision, which I am sure of that the final deposit uh, will never actually happen in Finland. I'm glad this was said because uh, I, I don't like to accuse people of things, but I'm convinced myself that all this talk about waste disposal is really just a way of getting people to accept the idea of moving the waste to one central location. Because moving the waste is very expensive and dangerous. And people will accept it more easily if they think this is for a good purpose, which is to eliminate the risk. But in fact, what they want to do is they want to reprocess it. They want to get the plutonium out which means they will be making the risk worse by turning it into liquid. I should mention that 20% of the fission products are gases. As soon as they chop up these fuel bundles, they release a lot of radioactive gases immediately. Now, if people knew that that was the real plan, they might not be so enthusiastic about it. But that's what the industry and their government allies believe is necessary. Thank you, Roland.